fairies and princesses, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly. And I'm Patrick Dougal. And Patrick. What? There has been some kind of uh, exciting Star Wars stuff going on lately. Kind of? Okay, big Star Wars stuff. It's exciting. <laughs> uh, the thing you're talking about, I assume, is? The Star Wars Episode Seven second teaser. They're not still not calling it a trailer. Uh, it's, it's a longer teaser than we got before, but it's awesome. It was quite good, I will say. And now... To put it in perspective here, I'm a Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. I have seen them all, but I'm not like a watch every TV show related to it type of fan. Mm -hmm. Where do you stand in the Star Wars uh, fandom? I'm, I was, when I was smaller, I was a lot bigger Star Wars fan. I don't know, growing up, like, I still have about three boxes of, like, Star Wars toys in my parents' home, nice. I have like one of those hundred dollar lightsabers. I used to dress up as Star Wars characters for Halloween. So I was like really into Star Wars. And I'm still into Star Wars, but I like I don't watch Rebels. Okay. Um I do I do partake in like Star Wars Battlefront and like Star Wars video games. Okay. Um, but it's it's more so just a straight six movies. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, and by the way, we're going to be giving away all of those toys that Patrick mentioned. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> no we're no, not. No, but there is a giveaway later, so stay tuned. Um, but, okay, so that's where we stand. So we're not like diehards, but we very much enjoy Star You were a diehard at one point in your life. Yes. I love Star Wars, uh, but it's, it's just the films for me. It's not the TV shows. So the trailer comes out, second episode seven teaser trailer, mm -hmm. and I was excited. I I got chills from the opening scene. Okay, with the with the 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 sandstormer and then and uh, the, the panning yes. and the uh, imperial. It's like stuck crash, in the sand, crashed in the, the sand. Planet. That was awesome. I was. It actually took me a minute to like realize it. I was like, oh wait a second, that's a big deal. Yeah, I was like, yeah. that's so cool. So that was definitely exciting. And of course, I think the biggest exciting thing is we finally see. An original Star Wars cast member in a trailer, mm -hmm. Harrison Ford as Han Solo and Chewbacca, of course, appear at the end, which is super exciting. Yeah. And I, I found this interesting. So who was narrating? Was it Luke Skywalker? It was Luke Skywalker. Okay, it's Luke Skywalker. He says, uh, he's talking about the, four, the, the Jedi talents and such, and he goes, mm -hmm. my father has it, I have it, my sister has it, you have it too. Do we know who he's talking to? We do not know who okay, he's talking to. Okay, we don't know. To. I was like, uh, okay, am I just not a big enough fan to not know who's No, like we definitely don't know who he's talking to. Uh, there's speculation that he's talking to Leia. Uh, but that would be his sister. Yeah. He says that, though. You, my father has it. I have it. My sister has it. You have it, too. Oh. Well, th there's one point. I think the point I'm talking about is, like, there's one point where the, in the trailer you see uh, him handing over a lightsaber. Okay. And there's hands who are taking it. And a lot of people are like, is Leia getting a lightsaber? <laughs> that would be Because if she has it, hello, can, can <laughs> Leia just, like, carry, it's like, it's Carrie Fisher, can you imagine her busting out with some, like, lightsaber moves? Um, That'd be kind of But, awesome. yeah, we don't, we don't know who he's talking about. Okay. Good. Well, I'm glad. I didn't think we knew, but I was like, at the same time, I'm not like giant fan. Well, I mm -hmm. mean, there's Star Wars fans that like amaze me. There's as also far as their another knowledge. thing going around. Of course, people like dissected the heck out of this trailer. What was it like? Ninety seconds or yeah. something? Yeah. Um. So if you notice one of the lines where he says, "My father has it," mm -hmm. and not had it. Ooh. Uh. There's like okay. speculation of that, but like, come on, come on, Darth Vader's see? dead. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it wasn't Luke saying it. But I'm sure. But we we Luke. know we know the villain of this one. Yeah. So like it's not Darth Vader. I'm sorry. And we saw the the like the melted Darth Vader mask and stuff. But in any case, it definitely got me more excited. Uh, the just hearing that music is mm -hmm. so exciting. And December's almost here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> like, we got some. We got some like it, it, like that like fast like montage. Did you notice my favorite clip about the whole trailer was there's a portion where they're in uh they look like they're in a hangar uh -huh. and uh they're shooting and things are blowing up. That scene has barely any CGI, and it is amazing. Thank you. Thank they are you. All practical effects. I love practical effects. And it was I was like, oh my god, it looks beautiful. 
Uh, Blu-ray special features, here we come. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's exciting. And, of course, there's there's even more Star Wars news. The, uh, on the Disney Dream cruise ship, they've announced that they're going to make a... Which is kind of like being redone a bit. It's mm-hmm. one of the older ships being redone. They're building a Millennium Falcon play area. And one of the cool things about this is this is officially the first permanent Star Wars fixture on a cruise ship. Yeah. Of course, there have been other Star Wars things on cruise ships, but this is a permanent fixture. So, you know, it is as if we didn't know this already, but Star Wars is officially part of the Disney yes. family. <laughs> uh, it's everywhere now. So And surprise, uh, I believe Marvel had their first one installed. I don't know what ship it is, but now we're having, like, there's a Marvel player installed. Now there's, I think it wasn't like a player, but it's like th- that kids camp kind of mm-hmm. area and now star wars so they're definitely integrating these new brands into anywhere possible have you seen the photos or at least concept art of the millennium phone i have it looks so cool <laughs> i was like i if i were a kid i would want I that to be my there. bedroom i was like is that a room available on <laughs> on the ship so that's pretty cool and also they're adding a like a uh, a version of Jedi Training Academy on Ooh. the ship. So, of course, if uh, you're probably familiar with Jedi Training Academy at Disneyland and Disney Hollywood Studios, where you get to train the kids to be Jedi, mm-hmm. I was thinking about this. What if they had an adult version? No. I know the problem would be that pe- they would kick <laughs> the crap out of Darth Vader. Yes. And so it would be dangerous. Like, I understand that. But how cool would it be? I was I was saying that they actually um over two weekends or so ago um they had the Star Wars Celebration Five where they debuted the trailer mm-hmm. and they actually had Jedi Training Academy over there. Really? And I was like, how many kids are actually here where you can fill all those spots? Yeah. I was like, there are some uh, adults who would probably enjoy want to partake it. in. That. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think they ever did. So no. Sadly, I don't think that'll ever be the case. I don't think so either. But. It'd be, maybe they should just like have some Star Wars character that they can like fill with padding so that we can like, you know, fight him. Yeah. Or her. I mean, Darth Vader's armor is strong enough. <laughs> Come on. I, I would be like, okay, double pay to be that <laughs> Darth Vader. Uh, but that's funny. So that's coming to cruise ship. And of course, coming up very soon, I think it's May 15th. Am I right? Is Star Wars Weekends is starting. Yeah, it's real, real soon. Real soon. So that's happening at Disney Hollywood Studios if again. Not soon. No, um, that seems right. I right. think it's May 15th, but I could be wrong. Usually, I'm, I just know it's May because it's May, May the, the 4th. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> but I course. know it's always after the 4th, so you... Yeah. So that's happening at the Hollywood Studios. And now I've never experienced it. You have several times. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about it. And first of all, one of the cool things about this is that it's not a hard ticket event. No. It's just you have access to Disney Hollywood Studios. You have access to Star Wars Weekends, mm-hmm. which is cool. Uh, so basically, it's it's a celebration of Star Wars. Uh, they have a ton, almost double, triple the amount of characters that are normally out there. They have regular normal Star Wars characters like Darth Maul, Darth Vader, etc. But then they also have the classic Fab Five dressed as like Donald Stormtrooper Which and is Mickey cute. Jedi and um, C-3PO's out, two ditos out. So they have a lot of character meet and greets. Um, they also have the celebrities, different celebrities come in every weekend. Uh, you can buy special like autograph signings. Um, they have premium packages as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, there's always a huge, huge area for Star Wars merchandise, and uh, there's limited edition pins and all this c- crazy amount of Star Wars merchandise. They have they have, one of the coolest ones. They had Star Wars umbrellas. Oh, like, well, like do they look like a lightsaber? Yeah, it was a lightsaber. Clothes? It was great. What does it look like when it's open? Like a Just lightsaber like a umbrella. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I think they had like uh, obviously red one with the Empire logo, and then the green one with the Rebel logo. Very um, cool. Then they so with those celebrities, um, usually like they'll have a host like James Arnold Taylor, who I think he's hosts like back, everything, right? and then Ashley Eckstein, who um, is known for voicing Ahsoka Tana on Rebels, and then her own clothing line. Uh, they're usually there, and they host different panels throughout all the weekends. Uh, I think last weekend Mark Hamill had a panel. Uh, last year. Last year, yeah, yeah, last, yeah, yeah. Year. last year. Mark Hamill had a panel even. So um, I heard, um, oh goodness gracious, what's his name? The guy who plays like the Sith Lord. What is the actual, Ian McDermott? Am I saying the right name? Am I making that For up? For who? Uh, he, was, he was in like episode three. Well, he's in all of them. Really. Ian McGregor? He, no, 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 I think it's Ian McDermott. He, he's... Um, not Darth Vader, but the... Darth Maul? No, the, the guy in the black cloak. He looks like the Grim Reaper's old... Oh, man. yeah, it's the Emperor. Yeah, the Emperor. <laughs> He's going. Okay. This year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is... It is Ian McDermott. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. 
That's... Uh, so they they do have big names and like uh of, of course it's not just like <laughs> the emperor. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh it's not just uh Star Wars movies, but Rebels, and I think when I was, I went there last year, Rebels was just premiering, they showed, like, special stuff, so it's, there's, and then they started adding fireworks, I think just last year, the fireworks became permanent, yeah. so watch fireworks sync to Star Wars music, like, it's awesome, it's a whole event, and no hard ticket, so yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun, but it is only on weekends, so make sure you go on a weekend. <laughs> So yeah, as I mentioned, they do have premium packages for this. They have, let's see, the Field of Force premium package, which is sixty nine dollars. Mm-hmm. Which, for so, frankly, I feel like if you are a diehard Star Wars fan, considering this isn't a hard ticket event, if you have an annual pass already, I would probably put out the money for this yeah. because what it does is it, it reserves a viewing area for the motorcade, which mm-hmm. you know has all the characters and I, the stars and for the, the stars day, as well. Yeah, uh, paraded down the street. Uh, the fireworks has a reserved seating area as well as for the celebrity talks i think you get to go to one of them with mm-hmm. reserved seating and there's a dessert party and then on top of that there's a deluxe premium package which is 99 dollars reserved seating for all of the talk uh the celebrity talks and then an ac- early access to darth small and and a cool lanyard and stuff so the yeah. the add-ons are you know they're not cheap but for a diehard fan i actually it sounds kind of worth it to me yeah and make sure if you want to see something specific check out the schedules because there's different panels every every weekend, weekend yeah so and even breakfast too last year they just started oh the yeah the sci-fi diner right? uh I, they, they both have it at the sci-fi diner and i want to say the mel's not the brown derby the 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 one Diner. with the TVs yeah the, the one TVs that normally the well no the one that's normally the Disney Junior breakfast oh. anyway uh the sci fi one has like normal Star Wars character meet and greets and then that one the other one has like the Mickey Jedi meet and greets cool so you can pick which ones because those meet and greets lines get real long I'm sure they do real long anyway that's a lot of Star Wars news yeah here. folks we have some Star Wars poster giveaways so Ooh. if you want a Star Wars poster from Disney Coast to Coast. Leave a comment below. Let us know. Well, what do we want to know? Their favorite episode, maybe? Yeah. Your favorite Star Wars episode. One through six. What's your favorite? Um, you're not actually going to believe me, and a lot of people will get angry when I tell three. you this. I love three. And I'll tell you why. It's because I love whenever you look at a character that you've known for so many years, and you all of a sudden have a different, a completely 180 different feeling toward them and it happened with Darth Vader whom when I watched that film I'm like I completely understand the choices you made like it makes total sense Mm -hmm. to me and Yoda I'm I'm just like wow I really don't like you right now like you're being a spoiled brat and I don't blame him for turning on you that's why I love three I also love five I was gonna say five is my probably favorite so but I love three it's good stuff although I have a guilty pleasure for six because of Ewoks Ah, but that's a different story. <laughs> uh, also, if you want a, a second chance to enter, uh, sign up for our e-note, which you can find at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. And, of course, it'll be on the contest page, all the rules and stuff. So check that out. Mm-hmm. And moving on from there, there was, as we mentioned, a kind of awesome uh, sneak peek of Tomorrowland at yeah. Disneyland and at Walt Disney World. We've both seen it. We haven't talked about it at all, actually. No. Oh, I'm so excited. Really? I really enjoyed that. It was like 10 minutes, wasn't it? It was it was it's, a it's good actually chunk of the film. 18 minutes. I, I like I asked like one of the guys like he's like, "Yeah, it's eight, 18 minutes of like and then granted like 15 minutes is the clip and then 3 minute like trailer long yeah. extended trailer." Um after seeing it, I lowered my expectations. Really? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I'm still confused because I, lo- I mean, I love nostalgic Disney. I have a great love of Disney history. So, like, they've recreated the 1964-65 World's Fair. Mm. They're playing It's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow. They're riding It's a Small World. So, like, that stuff I really, really, really dig. And I actually saw it with my mom who went to the 1964-65 World's Fair. So, mm. that was, like, kind of cool, too. And it was just um, – that stuff excited me. And then it becomes, I'm assuming, like, modern day or future or something. So, to me, it still feels like two different movies. Yeah. Which is a little – disconcerting to me but at the same time i'm like i'm sure it's yeah, fine I th- like the, obviously the one that what they showed is like the beginning of the movie yeah. and what i'm like i i did love that section of when it showed the world's fair um and when they filmed in the disney parks uh however i'm afraid like that's gonna be it in the movie as far I, as disney parks i can agree with that um yeah. and that was the only thing that interests me okay. really 
Um, however, I do. I am a fan of um, Breadbird. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm. I'm hoping. <laughs> big fan. Big, big fan. fan. Uh, <laughs> Incredibles. Uh, uh, I'm hoping that he'll prove me wrong. But right now, I'm just like, okay, I'll see it. But I'm. I'm not crazy about I, it. I'm still confused. It made me more excited. The more I see, the more excited I am. Like you said, I would not be surprised if like the whole nostalgia factor we saw most of it mm-hmm. in the preview. Uh, but of course, we're gonna see it, and uh, I appreciate the the sneak peek. Although there is a part of me that's like, maybe I shouldn't have watched it. Maybe I should just wait till May 22nd. But but yeah, so that happened. And I want to talk about something briefly, simply because you had your first experience ever at the El Capitan Theater in Hollywood. If you mm-hmm. don't know what the El Capitan Theater is, if you're ever in Los Angeles, right on Hollywood Boulevard, across the street from Grauman's Chinese Theater, uh, is El Capitan Theater, which Disney owns now. And it only shows Disney movies. And they only have always have like a special little treat, whether it's a stage show or something thing before it and you we had like a really special treat because we went on a one night only um screening of newsies Mm -hmm. and what were your impressions of like walking into this theater and such uh it was it felt like history Mm -hmm. (laughs) um i i think the 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 thing I most remember is when the movie was starting, that little like pre-show curtain show. curtain show. It's called the curtain show, yeah. I was like, what is this? So in back in the the days of the old movie houses, they had what they call a curtain show, which mm-hmm. is they had, in fact, you were judged by how many curtains your theater had. The El Capitan has four curtains. Mm-hmm. And the more you have, the grander you are. And, the, you know, it's this musical score and this lighting and the curtains dance and open and move and stuff to reveal the screen. And yeah, the El Cap does that before every single movie. Movie, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that was the that was the one thing I was, was surprised and never knew about. Of course, the organ player is really awesome, but he's there only on weekends now. He used to okay. literally be there every single show. He's there uh, only on weekends for most shows. Cinderella, he did do every show, but good to know. But yeah, I, I knew about that, so I like I was like, oh, I'm finally seeing it. But I knew about that. But the current show was. It's a nice treat. Yeah. And of course, Newsies was fantastic. Yeah. It was my first time seeing it on the big screen, mm-hmm. which was awesome because I love that movie. And then we got more special treats with the cast of the touring show performing and the cat and Kenny Ortega was there. Yeah. And stuff. So it was cool. But I want to mention briefly, they do give tours and I went on a tour recently. Uh, their longest tours are in the morning be- before any of the movies show. And then mm-hmm. throughout the day, they have 15 minute tours. But I went under the stage, got a picture with the organ, nice. like got to sit on the, the stool and, and do that. Went backstage to the Sherman Brothers dressing room. They showed us the curtain show. They gave us a really nice history of the theater. It's a spectacular theater. One of the most like upsetting things I felt was the fact that uh, in the between it being the El Capitan and Disney owning it, uh-huh. it was the Paramount Theater. So Paramount Studios opened it uh, or owned it rather. And the interesting thing was like they covered up all of that beautiful architecture in the theater. They wanted it to be more modern. And luckily they didn't destroy what was there, but they literally covered it up. Like they showed us photos of just the ceilings and the walls completely covered so that you couldn't see Hmm. this beautiful architecture. And when Disney bought it, they restored it and it's beautiful. But the tour was totally worth checking out. It's pretty cheap. Check out the website. It's kind of a new thing. So they're still working out the kinks, but I got a private tour. So it was cool. And, um, Check it out if you get the chance. Cool. And now I think we're going to move on to our special guest on today's show. Yeah. We have Whitney Avalon on the show, who uh, you may not know the name, but you've probably seen her viral videos of the princess rap battles. If you haven't, you will check them out before, after you watch this episode because yeah. they're pretty fun. And uh, we're just going to give her a call and um, talk to her a little bit. So here we go. Let's do it. Okay, we've got Whitney Avalon on the phone, folks. As I said before, she is the creator and star of Princess Rap Battles. And you may not know this, she's also the voice that you hear every single week on Disney Coast to Coast. Surprise! As she introduces the show, because she has such a lovely voice. So say hello, Whitney. Hello, Whitney. (laughs) Uh, uh, uh. Hi. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming on the show. This is going to be fun. And as I mentioned to you uh, briefly, we kind of have like a a five question questionnaire that we like to ask our guests just to kind of find out where they are as far as like their Disney fandom lies. So we kind of feel like these five questions will tell us what kind of Disney fan you are. Are you ready? 
Sure, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, for the first question for you, um, what is your favorite Disney animated movie? I'm going to go with Beauty and the Beast. Yay, good that's, choice. Yeah, because that, you know, I've always identified most with Belle, so I'm just going to go with that. It's gorgeous. The music's amazing. The story's great. The character's amazing. And you got to play Belle. So that worked out. I did recently get to play a a, a, a pretty forward thinking uh, modern version of Bally. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, what is your favorite Disney ride? Hmm. Okay, ride like roller coaster ride. I'm going to say Space Mountain. Okay. But like just any ride, you know the Toy Story one where you it's like Toy Story Mania where you shoot the imaginary balls and plates and things at the 3D screens. I don't know, Pat. Are we that familiar one, with that? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it's, Toy Story Midway Mania. That's the one. Yeah, that one. I, I, I've waited in line like an hour and a half for it and done it and then immediately been like, no, I have to do it again. It's so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. So uh, do you have a favorite Disney song? Now, this can be from a theme park or from a movie or just any anything Disney related. Oh, my God. I don't know how I could possibly pick one song because i'm one of those people who whenever i hear one of the disney princesses singing a song in a movie i start to tear up because i want to be singing that song <laughs> which is a, a crazy horrible wonderful thing but uh i i mean there's so, i mean all right there's so many i mean i feel like anything where I, like the word play like uh gaston is such a funny song and friend like me, like you can't be Robin Williams, or like poor unfortunate souls is so freaking funny and clever and dark and amazing. But it, I mean, yeah. So I apparently no, I can't pick one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we'll, we'll take those three. That's good enough. Um, do you have a favorite Disney theme park show or parade? As you'm sure you know, there's tons of live performance in the park. So show or parade in the parks. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go with Aladdin because I have a bunch of friends out here that are in the Aladdin show. Uh, so I've seen it a bunch of times. And I actually saw it once where the giant snake, spoiler alert, there's a giant snake that comes up that Jafar turns into at the end. And the giant snake just didn't function. And I think I think it was Aladdin or it might have been somebody else just looks up where it's supposed to be and is like, Oh no, an invisible snake. <laughs> and I just could not stop laughing because I'd seen the show a bunch of times because, I, like I said, I know some people at it. And I don't think the kids knew, but I just couldn't stop laughing. But That's... it's a great show, whether there's a snake or not a snake. I love the fact that he just like pointed it out because they probably could have done something and made it like not be obvious. But he's like, nope, I want to point out the fact that there is no snake. Today. Yeah. That's actually Patrick's favorite show. It is, it is. Nice, me uh, well, too. Other st uh, favorite stage show. I think Fantasmic wins for you. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, and finally, uh, I don't know how many visited, but do you have a favorite Disney theme park? Well, it's been a long time since I was in Florida as a kid, um, but I have very fond memories of Epcot. Does that count as a, as a separate park? Of yeah. course. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to say Epcot because I, I just remember having not traveled the world very much, uh, obviously, as a kid, and I still haven't traveled the world that much, just kind of getting to go to all the different like tastes of these places. I just thought that was so freaking cool. So that's the, I'm going to pick Epcot. Awesome. Good news for you, Whitney. You passed our test. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I don't I don't know how you would fail considering they're all based on your opinion, but but you passed. I guess my opinion could just be wrong. No. I could, I could have said some horrible ride and you guys could have been like, um no. That's I mean, she the could worst have been like, and you should just give up now. <laughs> oh, my favorite Disney ride? Jaws. Yeah, I was gonna say if you were like minions or something like that, then it would have been like, no, fail. Fail. Um yeah. But anywho, moving on from there. And so, as we mentioned, you are the creator and star of the Princess Rap Battles, which have gone insanely viral, like crazy viral. So before I ask you any specific questions, do you want to tell our listeners a bit about them just in case they've never seen it? Sure. Um, the Princess Rap Battles are... Uh, an original series of comedy videos featuring mostly female, but some male, strong characters, mostly from fairy tales and, and movies and other genres like that, um, rap battling to a sick beat 
uh, about who's better and, and putting each other down. And um, I, I make them so I get to play a character in each one, which is awesomely fun. And people have really been loving them all over the world, and it's been incredibly exciting. Yeah, so you've got four of them out as of right now, right? I believe it's Snow White versus Elsa. You have, yep. let's see if I pronounce this correctly, Galadriel versus Leia. Yes, correct. Mrs. Claus versus Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. And Cinderella versus Belle, where you got to play Belle, your favorite uh, movie character. So that's cool. And, I mean, Snow White versus Elsa, that was the first one. And you've now hit over 35 million views. Uh, have you wrapped your head around yeah. that? <laughs> No, I have definitely not wrapped my head around that. Uh, I can't picture one million people looking at a thing, let alone, uh, yeah, we've had 35 million just on that one. Uh, I think 65 million on on all the rap battles so far, and that's just on YouTube. We've, they've been re-uploaded by random people uh, all over Facebook and other sites that you know are more popular in other parts of the world. So they've had hundreds of millions of views, and I absolutely have no idea how to make my brain understand what that means. <laughs> That's pretty, I'm really happy for you because as you know, I adore you just as a person in general. So I'm so happy and I know you're a super hard worker, so you deserve it. So thumbs up to you. Thank you. And Thank it, you very much. I adore you too. Oh. So, and Patrick, I adore you even though I don't know you enough yet. Oh, but I thank still you. <laughs> I think the funniest part is when I first watched this video, um, I just moved here from Orlando. It's true. And I was just like, wait a minute. And my friend who I worked with in Orlando was actually your frog princess. Yeah, Shawana Carter, right? Shawana. Played Tiana. Yep. Yeah. I was like, small yeah, she world. Is awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. So how did this start for you, Whitney? I mean, where did this uh, initial concept come from? I'm assuming there was some inspiration from other rap battles you'd seen. But like, where did the whole princess idea come from? Uh, well, I was trying to write a rap about how I have never rapped and I can't rap. Okay. And there was a line There was a line in there where I said, I'm white like snow, pale like ale, porcelain skin princess from a fairy tale because I'm very pale. And when I went to rewrite it, I went, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Nobody cares about me. What if it's actually Snow White saying that? And then it all just kind of flowed from there. And yeah, obviously I'd seen, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of great comedy rap battles online. And then, you know, more serious kind of rap battles like 8 Mile Style and all that stuff. So I had a sort of general idea of maybe what that could be. And then I just twisted it a little bit and turned it into uh, a situation that these, these princesses might find themselves in. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And now you're doing about one a month, right? That's the goal that you're you're doing? I mean, I would say that's a goal. I don't think it's going to be met until we, we figure out how to scale up. Because right now, pretty much all the writing, directing, producing, editing um, is being done by me and my producing partner, Steve Gossett. So there's only two of us. We have a whole team of great people doing a lot of incredible work on VFX and, and obviously the cast and uh, lots of other areas. But there's only so many hours in the day that the two of us have. Yeah. So... We haven't quite been able to do one a month, but we are working on the next one. You heard it here first. We're working We're working on the next one. Can you give um, us any information about that one? I can't because nothing has actually been decided. Okay. Um, we, are, we are close to making some decisions. I'm really excited about the direction we're heading in. And the moment I can tell anybody what's happening, I definitely will. Okay. Well, I think what was really exciting was in the... the most recent one you did, you had a special guest on that. Yes. Uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, Buffy the Vampire Slayer herself, hello. Uh, had tweeted, I know, hello, right? She's she's incredible. She is a dream to work with. She had tweeted the first uh, rap battle and some other stuff about what we'd done, so I, I knew that she had seen them, and we put out a formal offer to her, and we were so excited when she said yes. Um, obviously she's so funny and gorgeous and talented and the fact that she was excited to be a part of the series was just a total honor and uh, I'm so glad that so many people are digging it. That's awesome. Is If there were one person that you could work with on it that you know you would just love to love to love to who, who would it be? 
Oh my god, there's so many, there's so many people. I don't want to insult anybody by not picking them. Um, I think anybody in the in the comedy music world, um, like a Tim Minchin or Bo Burnham, or obviously Al has already done one comedy rap battle, so maybe we'll save him for something different. Um, I think people in like the music world that are just total. Oh, I don't know if you guys, if that's a swear, you have to bleep me out. Sorry, um, but uh, you know, like some kind of a like amazing rapper. Like, I think I've said, I've said before, like, if Nicki Minaj wanted to be in a rap battle, um, we would absolutely put her in a rap battle. But honestly, if anybody awesome wants to be in a rap battle, we'll, we'll put them in a rap battle. So it's, it's, it's exciting. You know, we're able now, because Sarah did that one, to hopefully reach out to people that, uh, that are well known, that hopefully have seen them and are interested in being a part of something with a very low time commitment, but uh, a very long shelf life and a lot of like millions of really excited fans. So it's pretty exciting. I would love to see Bo Burnham do one with you. That would make me really, <laughs> really happy. <laughs> that would make me really, really happy too. Yeah, yeah I'm a big cool. fan of his. Cool. So, um, I mean, when you listen to the lyrics of these rap battles, they're really well thought out. So congratulations on that. But the first thing I thought was, how much research are you get? Like, how many times are you watching the movies, or how much time is just going to the research for these things? We do put in a lot of time, and uh, one good thing about having a writing partner, I wrote the first one myself, and now all the rest of them, Steve and I are writing together. Mm -hmm. um, we have kind of separate fandoms that we're parts of, so we are able, you know, if he's an expert on on one movie, maybe I'm an expert on another one, but we do watch. We, we do try to watch all the movies, read all the fairy, original fairy tales, look at all the different versions, um, find what we want to take from all of them. And thank you for saying the lyrics are great. We, we do try to really make it as funny, but also chock full of stuff as we possibly can. Success. Success. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Woohoo! Uh, of course, before we let you go, we want to mention how people, if you have not seen this yet, I believe the best place in the like initial source is youtube.com slash Whitney Avalon. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. So youtube.com slash Whitney Avalon. If you're watching us on YouTube, we'll put the link in the, in the description below. If you're watching us or listening to us on something else, that's W-H-I-T-N-E-Y-A-V-A-L-O-N. Right? <laughs> You, you keep kind of cursing. <laughs> Am I? Was I not? I should have asked. No, it's, you could it's, tell it's from the rap right, battles. I, I'm kind of a princess with a dirty mouth. That. That's like, kind of how I roll. I was like, the princesses are cursing. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so guys, that's where you can check it out. Of course, uh, you totally, totally should if you haven't already. They're fantastic. And Whitney, thank you so, so much for for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. We really, really appreciate it. So, thank you, and we look forward to the future ones. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure to talk to you guys. Well, that was fun talking with Whitney, but of course we have to end this episode just like every other, and that is with trivia. Mm -hmm. So why don't you hit me? Sure. So uh, earlier we were talking a bit about Star Wars. and um, Heard of it. Heard of it. The Star Wars Episode Seven trailer wasn't the only fun thing that was announced. Um, they had a little, uh, at Celebration 5, they had a little panel about... Uh, and other films they're working on, which are the Star Wars spinoffs, and they announced um, Rogue One and some of the different plans they're doing with that, where mm -hmm. it's about rebels who are trying to steal the plans for the Death Star. Now, they've released the title for the names of what they're calling these spinoffs. So wait a sec, you're talking about Rogue One as Rogue a spinoff? Rogue, Rogue One, One has spinoffs? No, Rogue One is a spinoff. Okay. But they're titling all these spinoffs in one group. Uh, they're calling them the rogues. No, no, no. rogue. Okay, <laughs> I so I don't know. The spinoffs, all these spinoffs that are gonna be filmed, filmed. and made, uh huh, are all under this one title. Blue Harvest. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, they actually, when they re released Rogue One, they showed like the title, and then they had the word on. Okay, so it. this is like this is like, um, so th this is so. Say A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back. So let's say that was Rogue One. Okay. So so Star Wars. So Rogue One is Star Wars. No, Rogue One is the is the underneath. So what are you asking me? What the little what the what the Star Wars is of Rogue yes, One? Yes, but it's actually underneath. Okay. Like these, oh, okay. all these spinoffs are going to be under the same title. Okay. Uh, Very confusing. Question. It's gonna be. 
I don't know. <laughs> What's it gonna be? Uh, they're called Anthology. Oh. So the actual title of Rogue One is Rogue One Anthology. The next spinoff is gonna be Blank Blank Anthology. Rogue Two Anthology. I don't think it's gonna be that. <laughs> uh, Rogue Three. But I'll give you an easier trivia. Throw it out there. Do you know the name of the villain in Star Wars Episode I don't. Seven? I actually don't. It is. I know that he's got a cool lightsaber. He does have a cool lightsaber. His name is Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. Sounds like a real person. Kylo Ren. I really like the spelling. It's like K-Y-L-O-R-E-N. Very cool. Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. Told you. I'm not a super, super... I'm amazed. I'm actually amazed by the amount of information that Star Wars fans have in their head. And people say that to me about Disney stuff. They're like, how do you remember all this stuff? I feel like it's so much easier to remember Disney stuff. Like Star Wars stuff is so (laughs) difficult to remember. It's difficult because there's like, it gets confusing with like, the novels that are written they call it the expanding universe and then some people disregard the expanding universe which disney kind of has right yeah it's it's all over okay (laughs) my trivia question is actually probably a little difficult as well but this is going back to where we're talking about the movie tomorrowland Mm -hmm. and in tomorrowland that little sneak peek a huge or a big part of it was it's a small world is very featured in the film and i was just wondering if you happen to know what the original title was supposed to be for it's a small world uh rivers of america it was not rivers of rivers america. of the world nope. around the world trips oh you're getting close trip trip around the world nope is it around the world it's trip of the world trip is correct of the world mm-hmm. songs of the world nope journey of the world nope traveling of the world nope People of the world. Oh, so close. Children of the world. Children of the world. I totally pulled that out of my head. That's okay. I accept <laughs> it. Children of the world was the original name. It's also, I believe, the fastest attraction to ever be created because it was kind of a last minute decision uh, to do it. And I believe it's somewhere between nine and 11 months from concept to creation. Hmm. So it's pretty cool. So anyway, folks, I think that's going to do it for us this week. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. As I mentioned earlier, there is a contest for some Star Wars posters. So go to the contest page at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. Connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, our blog. It's all at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. Thanks for watching this week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day. Today we're going to go on a little adventure with one of my favorite Disney branches, shall we say. And that is Disney Theatricals. Mm.